All right, time to go teach. Hello and welcome back to this next episode where we're going to be continuing our unit on biochemistry and specifically looking at water because water is awesome. It's so amazing and it's really, really cool that it's just made up of three atoms, you know, just those two hydrogens and one oxygen. And it has amazing properties all based upon that simplicity that it is. So let's check it out. First off, our targets for today. Hopefully by the end of today, you can draw a water molecule. That's really going to be important for you to make sure that you can identify the different components about what it's made of. Also identifying something about what we're going to call charge. So again, we're going to be looking at that. Next, describing the interaction between water molecules. Because water molecules, they don't typically come just one water molecule at a time. Most of the time, you're going to have a lot of water molecules all together, and so it's going to be important to know how they interact with each other. And lastly, identifying the properties of water molecules and what they cause. And that's going to also be our focus of the next lesson as well, because there's just a lot to it. So without further ado, let's get going. So water, as I said before, it's only made of two elements. It's only made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Again, H2O, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. And that's it. That's the entirety of what makes up water. The key, though, is remember that back when we were looking at elements, they have this amount of pull that they can have on electrons. And so that's what's going to cause what we say polarity. So this molecule isn't going to be an equal sharing of electrons all over. Again, oxygen's electronegativity is 3.5, and hydrogen's electronegativity is 2.1. So oxygen is going to be pulling on those electrons a lot stronger than the hydrogen is able to pull on the electrons. And that difference is huge. The difference of 1.4, remember, our scale only goes up to 4. So a difference of 1.4 is a lot. So that means that they form a polar covalent bond. It's not an equal sharing of electrons all over, it's like what we would see in a non-polar covalent bond. This is a polar covalent bond, an unequal sharing of electrons. Let's look a little bit at what that means for us here. So here's our water molecule. Remember, the red sphere is going to be our oxygen. The white sphere is our hydrogen. And inside, in the middle of each of these atoms, you can see the nucleus diagrammed. So what occurs is that the nucleus of the oxygen atom actually pulls the electron clouds of the hydrogen atoms closer to itself. And that means that this nucleus of this hydrogen and that nucleus of that hydrogen is closer to the edge, which means that other molecules around them would be able to experience that positive nucleus charge. They would be able to feel the effect of that positive nucleus greater over here than they would near the top. The top area where the oxygen is, this is going to have a slightly negative charge because the electrons are pulled more toward the top. On the bottom, the hydrogens would have a slight positive charge because they have the electrons pulled a little bit away from their nucleus. It's not centered around that atom anymore. The electrons are pulled off center. So if we were to shrink this down, let's take another water molecule and let's see what would happen. So with another water molecule, if we were to bring it in, then you see, the slightly negative oxygen is going to orient itself toward the slightly positive hydrogen because, again, opposites attract. So these opposites are going to want to face toward each other. If we were to bring another one in, again, the slightly negative oxygen orienting toward the slightly positive hydrogen, that, that will happen again 
and again and again. And just we add more and more and more water molecules, they're going to continue to orient themselves in such a way that the slightly positive ends and the slightly negative ends are going to face toward each other. So that way, opposites can attract and the likes would be repulsed by each other. And that means we can show that there's an attraction between these water molecules. There's a force that's holding them sort of together. And that's going to get us to some really key terms. That's going to get us to some key vocab for us. Cohesion. What we were looking at just in that last slide is cohesion, which is the interaction of attraction between like molecules. If you have a droplet of water, that is formed through cohesion because the water molecules are forming in such a way that they're pulling toward each other. They are attracted to each other. Adhesion is the intermolecular attraction between unlike molecules. So now we're not just talking about the attraction between the same type of molecule, but the attraction of different molecules. The reason that these droplets are still attached to this metal right here is because there is a level of adhesion where the water molecules are attracted and they are interacting with that metal. So the unlike molecule, the molecule that is not water, the metal they are interacting with. And lastly, we take ourselves to this thing called a hydrogen bond. And a hydrogen bond, first off, is not a real bond. It's not like a covalent bond. It's not like a metallic bond. It's not like an ionic bond. It's not actually a real bond. It is a force between different molecules, okay? that always uses a slightly positive hydrogen atom, which is why we call it a hydrogen bond. It has to involve hydrogen. I mean, it would make no sense if we didn't involve hydrogen, right? But it also has to have a slightly negative oxygen or nitrogen. And the reason for that is because for a hydrogen bond to occur, the element must be extremely small. So that's why we're looking at oxygen or nitrogen. So this actually is a hydrogen bond. The attractive force between water molecules is a hydrogen bond because it uses a slightly positive hydrogen atom and a slightly negative oxygen atom. And because of it's using these very tiny atoms, that means these molecules can get very close together. And that's a strong attractive force. It's not as strong as a covalent bond, but it is one of the strongest attractive forces between different molecules. So that is a hydrogen bond, which means that the water molecules can hold on to each other very, very tightly. So some key properties. First off, we have to remember, Water, it's a really small molecule. It's only those three atoms, those two hydrogens and that one oxygen. And that means that it's very, 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 very light. In other words, it doesn't have much mass. Water doesn't have a lot of mass. It only has a mass of 18 Daltons. Daltons are the unit that we use to measure the mass of an atom. Carbon has a mass of 12, nitrogen has a mass of 14, oxygen has a mass of 16, approximately. These are all rounded to the nearest whole number, just so you are aware. And hydrogen has a mass of one Dalton. For water, you just take the 16 Daltons for the oxygen and the two one Daltons for each hydrogen, and you end up with a mass of 18 Daltons. What's important about the mass is that if you think about other molecules that are very small, something like, say, like oxygen gas or nitrogen gas, well, oxygen gas, well, that's O2. So there are two atoms of oxygen, that each having a mass of 16 Daltons, which means that you have a mass of 32 Daltons. Water has a mass of 18. Oxygen gas has a mass of 32 Daltons. Nitrogen gas, the vast majority of what you and I breathe in every single day, is nitrogen gas, which has a mass of 28 Daltons. So again, it's much more massive than a single molecule of water. And it's very polar because oxygen is the second most electronegative element on the periodic table. And hydrogen, well, it's not very electronegative at all. 
So it's very polar. The pull that an oxygen has on those electrons is very strong. And that means it's that slightly negative area and that slightly positive area is going to allow for a very strong attraction to other negative or positive charges. And that provides us with a bunch of very important properties for life to exist upon this planet. Water has a high heat of vaporization. It has surface tension. It has a high specific heat. It's less dense as a solid than as it is as a liquid, which is very odd, right? Water has the ability to dissolve other polar molecules. And it also has this thing called capillary action. And you might be looking at these terms and thinking, what do any of these things mean? Well, don't worry about it. They will all be covered in the next episode. For now, we're going to look at a summary. Remember, watering is a very small polar molecule. It is able to cohere, attract to other like molecules, so it's able to be attracted to other water molecules, and adhere to molecules based upon their polarity. It will be attracted to other polar molecules. And it has specific properties that allow for life to exist upon this planet. Without the properties in the next episode, we couldn't have life on this planet. And I don't know about you, but I think that'd really stink. So until next time, be awesome, stay awesome.